I think that the most important is to recognize the value of untouched nature, uh, which is usually uh, only seen when it is gone. So I think that it's very important uh, to be aware of the very high value of that. Of course, there is a need to develop the country, a need of economic development. And for that, uh, there is absolutely necessary to make a very proper environmental impact assessment for every project. And uh, as far as possible to keep nature unfragmented uh, and in large uh, natural areas uh, functional. So I think this is a lesson which we learned in Europe, that our nature remains very fragmented and therefore not very functional and doesn't support anymore many of the natural uh, uh, species which were present in Europe uh, earlier. Yes, in principle, the European Union has a very well-developed uh, environmental legislation which requires to uh, check every uh, large project against its impact on the nature, which means that if the nature should be uh, impacted, uh, there is a need to look for alternatives. And if the alternative is impossible for whatever reason, then uh, there is a need for compensation measures. Usually the alternative solution is cheaper and better than uh, uh, the uh, compensation, but in some cases, of course, uh, we also agreed on the compensatory approach. It is of course a question of long run, but in, in the long run uh, certainly yes, because uh, we see how much we have to invest now to restore biodiversity in the Europe. This is extremely expensive and the result is not uh, clear in advance, while if you protect the habitat uh, in the state which supports biodiversity, then you don't need to spend all this money. So if you count all this together, and certainly it's better to have uh, projects uh, which are uh, projected in a way not to disturb uh, biodiversity and the natural habitats. Uh, many people nevertheless don't really recognize uh, this effect because it is not seen immediately and they seem to accept uh, that the project which is uh, per se cheaper at the moment is better than the one which is, which is a little bit more expensive but uh, more friendly to biodiversity. So I want to really uh, repeat and warn the people really to think about the long-term effects. Certainly, yes. I think that uh, it's, it's worth to reconsider because I am pretty sure that uh, the version with a uh, bridge over the bay uh, is uh, at the end even cheaper because it's a shorter way, basically. It may be a little bit more uh, problematic in technologi technological sense. But uh, I think that the positive uh, effects uh, will certainly overweight uh, this uh, problem. Uh, and uh, for, the, for the long run, again, uh, I think that the, the w way which will cut the mangroves from the forested area will cause a, a, a very negative effect uh, on uh, the local fauna. Uh, directly and indirectly, of course, will open the territory for all possible kind of illegal activities which will destroy even the habitat itself. So I think it's worth to, to avoid that by the alternative solution, which I see uh, one, one possibility certainly is the, is the bridge over the bay.
The public opinion is actually uh, extremely important in, in European Union. Uh, we have uh, many legal uh, instruments which assure that uh, the politicians during their decision making have to take into account the public uh, opinion. And in addition to that, of course, there is a direct link between the uh, democratic uh, electoral system and public opinion. Usually, if the politicians don't follow the public opinion, uh, they will lose uh, some support of the public for the, for the coming elections. So I think uh, on the one side we have legal binding instruments which, which push uh, decision makers to follow the public opinion. On the other side there is also this indirect effect which uh, uh, links the decision making to the elections and therefore the public opinion is followed as well.